Hi, everybody. Welcome to the starchlady.com. I have a special guest speaker today. This is Chef Jay, and he owns his own vegan culinary school. Yes, you may attend. He'll tell you all about it. Jay, tell us about you, because I am so excited that, to have a, a dude on our show today talking about eating <laughs> healthy, because we don't get too many uh, male guest speakers. The last one we had was the uh, vegan banker, and uh, he has lost so much weight and has gotten so much healthier eating plant-based. And, uh, you know, because we're in the health industry, we do a healthy vegan, you know, face it, Twinkies could be considered a vegan. <laughs> Technically, food, yes. <laughs> but it is not necessarily a vegan uh, health food. So so tell us all about you. Just, just tell us. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate you having me on. I love talking about uh, plant-based eating. Um, and, and especially, like you said, getting it out there to uh, an audience that you might not expect. And I do, I find that, uh, men are very resistant, um, to the, you know, plant-based diet. Um, but it's, you know, getting the more and more it's prevalent, the more I'm seeing men, you know, coming around. Uh, so, uh, yes, thank you. I, I do. I run a, a vegan cooking school, a vegan culinary school out of, um, Providence, Rhode Island. I, uh, so I've been a professional chef uh, since 1999. Um, and then up until, even up until about a year and a half ago, I was actually still an executive chef for a local hospital here. Um, but it was a, you know, an Omni kitchen. Uh, so uh, up until about two years ago, I, you know, two years ago, I started cooking vegan completely. I actually left the job as the executive chef uh, and concentrated on my own program here. Uh, so yeah, so I, I've been cooking professionally for a while. Uh, I've run catering companies and I've run fine dining restaurants and, uh, beach bars and all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, and then I turned 40 and the restaurant industry is brutal. It's a, a lot of fun. I love hospitality, uh, but it's brutal on your body. The hours are long. Uh, you know, I, the eating is terrible. The, the, the way it actually skews what a proper portion size is and how food should be cooked. It's, uh, it really, I had no idea how off my information was, uh, until, uh, I turned 40 and I went and saw, uh, Dr. Neil Barnard speak, uh, at an engagement here in Providence. And he has fascinating research on the relationship between uh, eating animal products and diabetes, uh, which is his concentration, but also heart disease and all of that. Well, that runs rampant in my family. Uh, my, my grandmother was severely diabetic. She was on dialysis up until she passed away. Uh, there's multiple different kinds of cancers in my family. I lost my mother to breast cancer. It's, you know, so when I, when I hit 40, my daughter was only six and it really like kicked in going and I felt like crap. I felt horrible. <laughs> so I was like, my goodness, I need to do something. And uh, my wife had been, you know, pushing to go vegan for a while. Uh, for her, mostly it was um, ethical. But, uh, you know, we went into Dr. Neil Barnard and that day I came home and I threw away everything in my kitchen. Uh, and we started cooking plant-based the next day. And that was five years ago. Um, and in that five years, my cholesterol numbers dropped drastically. Uh, I'm not pre-diabetic. Um, you know, and I've learned an immense amount in a short period of time. I didn't think I could do it. I thought I could never go vegan. Uh, and then, you know, you get the usual myth. Where are you going to get your protein? And, and you know, I, I have to have that three compartment plate. You have to have your protein, your starch, <laughs> and your veg, and all that crap that they <laughs> teach you. And uh, and then as I you know learned more and dove deeper, just the the enormous amount of reasons uh, to go vegan have kept me vegan, even working in you know a meat based kitchen. So, wow, that that is absolutely amazing. So I can get this back on gallery here. So my, my son that lives with us, he's 43 
and he hit the burnout chef stage. He's worked for, you know, famous uh, sports people and uh, a lot of really cool people over the years. But uh, if you're working for somebody else, you're never going to get paid what you're worth. I don't care what industry you're in. And so, true. So, so he's trying something a little different right now, but he is absolutely passionate about the kitchen and things like that. But uh, you mentioned about uh, recipes and diabetes running in your family. And I have a little, little joke, don't take offense, but I always say there are no <laughs> inherited diseases. There's just inherited bad habits and recipes. And so <laughs> you, you've seen for yourself that once you got off the crazy train of the traditions of that three compartment plate, that mm -hmm. your health changed, your health improved. Did you have any side effects like uh, weight loss or anything like that? I did. I, so I was well over 300 pounds uh, wow. when I first went vegan five years ago. Yeah. And, wow. uh, you know, I don't, I hate the gym. <laughs> it's, it's kind of terrible to say. I don't like going to the gym, but yeah. I, I do live in a beautiful area in Northern Rhode Island. And uh, it's a great place to walk. We've got lots of bike paths and trails and so I will walk. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, I dropped, you know, 60 pounds very quickly, you know, right off the bat. And, uh, and just felt better in general. Uh, my energy, yeah, my energy level was up, and you know, I I still live a busy lifestyle, um, and you know, I I don't find myself slowing down uh, as much. You know, I don't need naps in the middle of the day, <laughs> sure, and things sure. like that. I I just put on my Facebook page group uh, this morning. Uh, somebody had shared a, a, a memory from like seven years ago and it was hilarious. And it's this vegan gentleman that lives in his van and he made this cute little video about, and he's holding up things, you know, a bunch of people and he's holding a bunch of bananas are, you know, worried about that. I'm not getting enough protein and I get my protein. He's holding up lentils and, and beans. And, and he, he, he wor uses the words into like, Instead of saying he wants to kill the next person who asks him where he gets his protein from, he says, <laughs> I want to kale the next person. He holds up a bunch of kale, you know, as he's talking about this thing. It's, it's really, uh, it's absolutely funny, but he nails it. And um, yeah. I, I just, a friend of mine was just over, one of my, my good friends, and she has been seeing me post about my lentil bread that I've been making the last, you know, a couple of weeks. I'm become obsessed with uh. getting more fiber. And I literally soak the lentils overnight. I blend them smooth. Uh, this time I also put in half a jar of sprouted mung beans, the, the green sprouts. And nice. I blended it all together. I add uh, some psyllium husk. I add some nutritional yeast. I add some uh, chia seeds to act like eggs. I mm -hmm. add um, just a little bit for the whole loaf. There's maybe a quarter to a half a teaspoon of salt in there because Bread without salt is not a thing. Okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> but I uh, learned that lesson the hard way. Anyways, right. but you blend that all together. And instead of using yeast, we use baking aluminum-free baking uh, powder. And mm -hmm. it makes these beautiful loaves that come out looking, texture, and, and psychologically tasting like pumpernickel. But it's made out of literally soaked lentils. So wow. that recipe is on there. And it, it turned out absolutely beautiful. And i had been making it for several weeks, but mixing it by hand. And because you're adding all that slim husk and chia seeds, it gets really stiff. And um, you have to kind of pack it into the loaf and it raised just maybe a little tiny bit. But I don't have yeah. the wrist strength for that. So my my son for Mother's Day got me one of those big kitchen aids and it's got the oh, dough yeah. on it, right? So I did it in the dough hook and because it was beating all that extra air into it, I popped it in the oven thinking it was going to raise this much. And that sucker came out twice the size of the container. I mean, it's the, it's the biggest loaf I've ever made. And so now I can adjust knowing that I can get that more air. I'll score the top of the loaf next time. So it lets a little bit of the air out, you know, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. But, but absolutely fascinating. Dr. John McDougall is also, we follow, we, we follow the, the starch solution here. And uh, Dr. John McDougall's famous phrase is it's the food. It's the food, you know? So if you were to go to his um, retreats when he had them in California, now he does them online. It's a 12-day online program. And it's like eight hours a day for 12 days, even through the wow. weekends. And it's fascinating, worth every dime. But you can get a certification in his program and his teaching. 
and he will uh, show the evidence and documentation and medical and everything for in the last 40 plus years that he's been teaching this, how many people have been able to reverse their diseases. And uh, it's all about the food. So we, we say no meat, no eggs, no dairy, no oil. Oh, speaking of eggs, have you ever tried making the eggs out of the mung beans? Like they, in the story, Oops. they sell them as just egg. Is Sorry, you cut out there for a second. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, you froze. You froze. I don't froze. know if that's my system. Do you want to go out and come back in? Oh, sorry. Then. Sorry, Doctor. There, oh, there we go. <laughs> there you are. Got your back. I don't know. So uh, I didn't know. A bit. There we go. Yeah. I, was, I was asking I, if you'd ever tried the mung bean eggs. Uh, it's an egg replacement called Just Egg that you can buy in the store. So that is, those, yes. those have a lot of oil in them. But yeah. you can make that same recipe at home by soaking and blending the, the mung beans and adding the black salt and different things like that. And so oh, we've yeah. been going crazy making those. We can, again, it's it's more fiber adding to it. Mm -hmm. But when we want that egg experience, I guess you can That's, say, we used to <laughs> live on scrambled eggs with vegetables in it. And, Absolutely. And so, yeah. So now we we will whip up some mung beans and add our stuff to it. And we've got a jar full of, you know, our cheap pennies, you know, mixture that we can make our own eggs out of and stuff. So, I mean, there's there's several things, but like Dr. John McDougall is excellent. Uh, Dr. Uh, Caldwell Esselstein, Dr. Bernard, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's there's several different people that have just a fantastic grasp of this. And like me, myself. Um, I was able to reverse breast cancer. They had done a hysterectomy and removed my entire reproductive organs and, and tubes and ovaries and everything because I had some mm -hmm. growths there that was causing some issues. And when they wanted to start messing with my breasts, it's like, yeah, no, I think I want to keep those, you know? <laughs> so I, I knew there had to be a better way. And you learn very quickly when you become ill that painkillers don't make you well. And so mm -hmm. I knew there had to be another way. I was homeschooling and uh, for science for days, we, every time we were doing science, we were digging in, trying to figure out how to get mommy well. I was on a wound back for four months. I had daily nurse care. Physical therapy came to my house three days a week to teach me how to walk because when they did the hysterectomy, they, they hit some nerves on the way out, losing my ability to, to use my right leg. And I mean, it wow. was a mess. So there had to be a different way. And at the time I owned a travel agency and I literally made an entire career shift, took myself back to school, became a doctor of naturopathy so that I could have all those credentials on the wall to be able to teach on a larger scale. And the silver lining that came out of COVID, now don't get me started on vaccines. I wrote my dissertations <laughs> on how bad that is. I, I, I just, that'll be a whole nother topic we can <laughs> moan about. But, um, you know, I, I, the good thing that came out of COVID was the communication that has opened up for businesses and families around the globe. I mean, we're able to chat with our kids in Europe when they're stationed with the military. I mean, they're all over the place and we can actually have a, oh, yeah. a wonderful conversation, but we're able to do things like this. I mean, my husband went to Rhode Island before we ever met. And he has not stopped talking about it. We've been married for 31 years and he's never stopped talking about how beautiful Rhode Island was. And so I've never been there, but here I am having an interview with, you know, Chef Jay from Rhode Island and getting to see a tree and a palm tree right. in the back the <laughs> background there. So, I mean, that's pretty exciting. So that is a blessing that we have this technology that we can use to, you know, get more information to more mm -hmm. people. I mean, we have viewers from all over the globe that would never learn about healthy eating if we didn't have this technology. So using that well, for what it's worth. But, it, um, exactly. Exactly. I mean, when I was coming up training in the restaurant industry, this information wasn't easily accessible. I mean, you, yeah. you, you can go to the library and find some of this stuff, but even the research wasn't being done yet, you know, to, to the extent. Uh, so it's, it's amazing. It's the more... I learn the more I want to dive in and, and continue uh, because there's yeah. new information all the time and, and new recipes and formulas and replacements. And, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's really fantastic. It's a great time, uh, you know, in, in history to, to be heading this direction. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I really hope 
to see that this trend continues and we'll see more and more people, you know, realize that it's not that hard. It's not, you know, it's not a cult idea, you know, it's, it's uh it's not a trend. It's not a fad. That's right. This is, this is a sustainable, delicious way to eat <laughs> the, you know, I, I am not lacking for flavor uh, or yeah. textures in my food. You know, I, I that's my style. You know, when I teach my classes, believe it or not, when I teach my classes, probably about 75 percent of them are not vegan. 75 percent of my students are not vegan at all. Basically, barely vegetarian. Um, and they just don't know. Um, they don't know where to start, uh, even for me as a chef, uh, you know. I wasn't sure where I was going to begin. I knew what I wanted to do. Um, but I had never, believe it or not, I had never had a lentil until I went vegan. You know, I, I didn't really, you know, unless I had Thai mm -hmm. food every once in a while, you know, I had never really used them. Uh, yeah. they, they weren't that prevalent. And so, uh, you know, and that's what my students are running into. They just don't know where to start. So I have a lot of people that are beginning their journey and it's great because I can give them all these wonderful resources, all these yeah. things that, that I've found and show them how easy it really is. My recipes are, are simple. My classes are only about an hour to 90 minutes long, depending. And most of that time is really just kind of spent connecting. Um, yeah. You know, the, the recipes, I, you know, I live a busy lifestyle. I, I have an 11 year old daughter. She dances four days a week. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I'm the transportation. <laughs> I still, uh, you know, have a lot of things going on during the day. So I like my food to be delicious and, and healthy. Um, but it's gotta be quick, um, yeah. and cheap, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and that's the other, you know, misnomer that people think is vegan is expensive and plant-based eating is expensive, but it's mm -hmm. really not, it's really not. You can no. go, you know, to the, the I have, um, uh, we have an Aldi, you know, up here. And if you pick and choose, you know, if you stick in their fresh produce area and things like that, you're getting perfectly delicious organic vegetables for a, a low price. Yeah. Um, you know, and I can I can make a whole meal that'll serve a family of, you know, five uh, for under thirty dollars very easily. Easy. Um, Easy. Yeah. You're, you're not yeah. having to buy the meat. You're not having to buy the dairy. You're not having to buy the eggs. Right. You're not having to buy the oil. You're not the things that really add up the price tag on something like that. And have gone up since you know since mm -hmm. COVID and since they started yeah. running into, uh, you know, at the hospital when I was there. I mean, we, we were constantly running out of out of product because there were problems with the chicken coops and there was problems with processing the beef and. You know, and and all of that. It um, you know, yeah. plus recalls, and it's it's really frightening. I'm like, I'm so glad I don't have to deal with any of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, let let me uh, let me give you a suggestion. I'm gonna flip over here to my me as the speaker here for a second. Let me click up here. Um, maybe it's not gonna let me. There we go. Um, what I do, my specialty as a doctor of naturopathy is microscopic blood. Maybe. When you start a new class, you could pop me on for 10, 15 minutes at the beginning of your class, because if I can help more people understand why they need to cook vegan, why they need to eat plant-based, it's it's all in the blood. I mean, these are all the things that I was able to reverse. Everything from my vision being 2020, at, you know, I, I, I was telling you earlier, I got the restriction on my driver's license removed at age 60. I'm 62, going to be 60. To this uh, the next month, actually, I'll be 62. I'm rushing wow. things. Why would I do that? Anyway, right. it's, <laughs> um, but, you know, the cancer, the lumps in my breast, things like that, the mm -hmm. hysterectomy, all that. But this is healthy live blood in the microscope. It's round. It's smooth. It's all the same size. They're not touching. That's beautiful. This is healthy dry blood. Now, this is my blood. And this dry wow. blood here has red with black lines. It's like textbook perfect. Okay. Then you go over here and you see, we take just a drop of blood out of the fingertip, put it on the microscope. But this here is a lady who's 70 years old that had a cancer, uh, protein cancer of the blood. And you notice there's no black lines here. And if you get close enough and see it, okay. it it's raised up almost like a spackle on a wall that you could scrape off. Right, yeah. And, and after going, drinking uh, water and I have an alkaline water company and we, we treat your whole houses and things like that. But um, 
uh, had her drinking the water every two hours and going to a plant-based diet and cutting out the meat, the dairy, the oil, and the eggs. And here's her blood just two weeks later. Look, here's the red with the black lines. There's no black yeah. lines here. That protein was leaving. And for this particular um, blood marker, the, her numbers were like 6,500 and they dropped to 4,500. And her oncologist thought, this is not a curable disease. She was actually going into hospice and told she only had uh, 90 days left to live. And it wow. dropped down again, dropped down again. It was about the 24, 2200 marker, they actually had her bring me in because they want to know who I was and what I was doing to do this. <laughs> and when I started talking about water every two hours to rinse the system, so I tell people, go to the bathroom, wash your hands, get a drink. Go to the bathroom, wash your hands, get a drink <laughs> of water, not coffee and all that other toxic waste that people are putting in their bodies. Mm -hmm. And um, and that she was eating plants. And now our plants, like Dr. McDougall teaches, um, the starch solution would tell you you could eat 70% um, starch, potatoes, beans, rice, lentils, you know, uh, pasta, whole grain pastas, and a little bit of vegetables for like color or something. Or their maximum weight loss version, which I say is the maximum health version, is half the plate is starches and half the plate is vegetables. And uh -huh. that's what we had her do. And do you see the difference in just two weeks time? And Maybe. instead of, you know, living an extra 90 days, she lived an extra five years and died from an accident totally not related to her disease, just an un unforeseen accident, just wow. it, it breaks my heart. Uh, this gentleman here was part of a study I did with Overeaters Anonymous in 2011 and see how all the blood cells are all clumped together and stuck together. Mm -hmm. Again, damage from excessive amounts of protein in his diet. And here just a week later, and he hadn't even changed the dietary part. He just started hydrating with water more properly and loosening them up. Now that's not perfect blood but it's a hindsight better than it was. This mm -hmm. one here, um, protein linkage here. And if you see really close, see these ones with the little bumps? Oh that's yeah. A, that's a real live, honest to goodness, spike protein. Not the uh, styrofoam wow. ball and the tea ties you saw on the news <laughs> through, through COVID. This is a real life spike protein here and the person did not have COVID. They had a bad diet of highly acid foods and sugar. So when you see these, you know that they've got sugar issues. They're getting a lot of acid in their diet. There's too much protein. There's yeast and bacteria here. And the dry sample, we're supposed to be red with black lines, That's right? Right. You don't need to go to school as long as I did to know that ain't good. <laughs> you know? Something's yeah, not if right. There was, yeah. If there was just one spot, it would be reproductive issues. But because it's all clustered like that, we know that there's something going on with the colon. And this particular person, mm -hmm. their mother died from colon cancer. So we knew that was a red letter day, but here we are 30 mm -hmm. days later, same gentleman. Look at that. Wow. Huge difference. And blood sugars went down. They the, went on the first visit that same day, they wanted to put him on insulin. He didn't want to do insulin. So they said, we have to start pills. He didn't want to start pills. So he finally he asked, you know, what can I do? We got him started and he didn't have to go on any pills. His doctor even said, he did not have to ever mark on an insurance exam that he'd ever had diabetes because according to his new blood 30 days later as if he never had it, never had any high numbers. We see things like parasites, things like this. Now the dry blood samples, I can actually do through the mail. The live blood, I can't, but I have a kit for the, the, the live blood. But if your students were to see how easily they could reverse conditions of health, it puts a whole new twist on saving the planet, on saving the animals and different things. You know, mm -hmm. parasites we get rid of with pumpkin seed milk, you know, ginger tea, things like that, that the bugs don't like. So there's yeah. all kinds of things that can be taught at a level that allows them to see just a little bit more. Why am I doing this? What is the, the purpose of this? And you can't unsee that. Well, we changed sides. Now I'm over here. Um, but you can't unsee that. And especially if they see their own blood, that would be something. It's like, let's look at their blood. And then after they finish the program, let's look at their blood again and see how it improved just while they were learning and doing these new concepts. I mean, that's that's right. mind changing. That That's generational education that will last beyond mm. uh, the classroom, beyond the kitchen to, to be fascinating.
Do you by chance teach your classes virtually at all? I, I don't currently. Um, so I've been uh, teaching in my current uh, state since um, the beginning of January and I was really kind of feeling it out uh, to see how it goes, you know, and yeah. the response has been fantastic. Uh, I, oh, yeah. I really um, am blown away uh, by how interested people are. So now I'm starting to expand and do different things. So virtual will be coming up soon. Um, that would be I'm excellent. Doing, yeah, yeah, exactly. The more people I can get to, uh, the, the better off, you know, and the happier I'll be, the more information. I, I love teaching and training. I always have. Uh, so to be able to give out good information now, <laughs> uh, it, you know, really, it, it's, uh, I don't know, it might be selfish, but, you know, it, it's a feel good moment for me, too. Yeah. Uh, because it's information that, you know, I wish my mother had breast cancer at, at she was diagnosed at 51 with stage four. She mm. only lived another year. But in that yeah. year, she had actually started doing some research into that and had started to learn the things that you were just explaining. Yeah. And unfortunately, it was too late, but it yeah. stuck. It really stuck with me, uh, and especially with the state of, you know, the health insurance industry and all that kind of stuff. Um, to be able to have control like that over your own body, um, yeah. which, you know, is, is not, it's nothing new. We've just been kind of pushed away from, from, you know, tradition. If you look at traditional, you know, old civilizations, the, the, the blue zones, right. If you're familiar with those, the blue zones in the world where people are living 90, a hundred plus years, their plate is what you were saying, you know, 50% yeah. starch, 50% yeah. vegetable, and, and that's it. And they don't yeah. need anything else. And they're living, you know, cognizant. They're, they're not having Alzheimer's and all the other things like that for quite yeah. a long time. We, we even lived in Japan for three years. I've never been oh, around wow. more healthy people. And Amazing, people yeah. have this misconception that they're eating sushi every day for, for dinner and, <laughs> and, and fish and, you know, all this stuff. It's not true. I mean, no. that is as eating sushi with our neighbors was as celebratory as Thanksgiving in America, you know, Absolutely. And, and as rare. And so <laughs> it was rice and vegetables, noodles and vegetables. And 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 we lived there for three years and we love being part of the village. We actually our house was surrounded by three rice fields and a forest. You know, we went to the <laughs> bathhouse and took baths with the neighbors that knock on the door and motion that it was time to take our little satchel and tote on down the street to go <laughs> get our baths, you know? So uh, we, we went in Rome, do as the Romans, but mm -hmm. uh, rice was a constant. Noodles, uh, you could walk down what we call Greenpole Street right outside the military base, because we lived in the village, but we'd go over to the Greenpole Street for most of our, you know, village shopping and stuff. And there were so many noodle shops and the doors were always open. And because uh, mm -hmm. of the air conditioning situation, it's more, it's not central air is no, not normal. And right. so the doors would be open and fans would be going. And you just kind of pause by the door and you listen for the loudest slurp. <laughs> and if they weren't slurping loud, it wasn't a good noodle shop. Go to the next yep. one, you know. And so these traditions became incredible. And as we got to know our village neighbors, it was so much fun to realize how and I, and I didn't catch it all the way. I lost a lot of weight in Japan, though, because we walked everywhere and oh, yeah. we lived on more rice and vegetables than we ever had. And uh, but now that I understand the blood part of it and realizing that the blood makes up every cell, tissue and organ that we possess, including our hair and our toenails, we want it to be the best that it can be. And by having it be the best that it can be, it allows us to recognize, okay, if I get a new layer of skin every seven days for a new layer to pop up, okay, skin. Uh, my liver, every seven months, like a lizard's tail, old cells die off and new cells are made by from what I ate and drank. So if my liver's healthy every seven months, I've got a new one. If it's not healthy, it might take 24 to 48 months. Uh, your brain and eyeballs every two years, every day, old cells die off. Ask your mattress. Uh -huh. It'll tell you all about it, you know, right. and uh, new cells are made by what you ate and drank. So if you want bacon, double cheeseburger liver or a heart or brain or whatever, um, eat that way. But if you want to live a long, healthy life, 
untraditional to the standard American diet, which I have always laughed that standard American <laughs> diet spelled sad. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> S-A-D. Can't get more graphic uh, than that, you know. It's but so let's, true. Let's uh, share screen here. I want to go over to your website a little bit. I want you to give me a little tour here. Yeah. And then I wanted to show you a couple of uh, recipes and things that, that I think would be fun for your, your group to try. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. One of the, one of the things I tell uh, my students at every class is it's so much easier to cook plant-based in, you know, in ethnic diet. So oh, absolutely. Thai, food, Thai food is very easy. Indian food. is very easy. You know, Latin food, Mexican, you know, if, if you're stuck on, you know, the format of the, like you said, standard American diet, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's really hard to do. It's almost impossible. It's, you know, and they, and you see too, these other cultures, they're cooking with fresh herbs and they're cooking with tons of spices and minimal salt and minimal sugar. Yeah. And, yeah. It, but, but there's nothing like, I love going into an Indian restaurant, the smell of basmati rice yes. and curry and coconut. It's just, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yes. Well, and I have a favorite Ethiopian restaurant here in town too. Uh, and they make that bread out of the teff, very simplistic yes. bread. And um, you eat it with your hands and it's uh, seasoned and just absolutely perfect lentils and, and hummus and, and um, uh, rices and things like that. All plant-based vegetables, carrots and they can make a turnip taste good. I mean, who, how is that a thing? You know? And and it's but you really get down to it. I mean, at what point in the crazy train did did marketing brainwash us to believe we had to have meat four times a day? You got to have right. the bacon and the eggs for breakfast. You got to have yep. this uh, burger or the turkey sandwich for lunch. You got to have the meatballs or the 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 lobster or anything in between. For dinner, oh, yeah. when did that happen? Right. You know, that's I, not it, survival. Right. And the thing is, if you look back and not that long ago at some of the really popular dishes. So, you know, fajitas from Mexico, bouillabaisse from France and things like that. Soups and stews. They were made with leftover bits. Like the, the diet, even back then, was not meat heavy. Meat was, you know, w was a luxury you know, back when, you know, in the early 1700s, 1800s, and, um, you know, they were eating more plant-based back then, too. And you're right, it is. It was marketing. It was really good marketing uh, yeah. that got us to realize that, that thought we had to have this. You know, it's a luxury item. You have to have it all the time, though. And, yeah, yeah, it's gotten it, it, so it's far It's a royalty from... thing. The, the kings right. and the queens, the royalty. And look at the exactly. conditions of the kings and queens and royalty that died in their 40s from severe right. <laughs> obesity you know uh, i'm sure it was cardiovascular degree, degree disease with all the the fat and lard and stuff that they were the, eating yes you know and you just go on and on with that and you're like going oh this is not good it's kind of like with chocolate you know i i literally would love to have the uh i say it's a degraded moral code that would allow me to do a double blind study to prove to people that coffee beans and cocoa beans they all grow within 10 degrees north or south of the Earth's equator, right? Mm -hmm. And the indigenous people of those areas for centuries have ground those, those beans into mud and formed a poultice that was at the proper astringent level to be able to put on external wound care and heal. So when uh. they started putting it in a cup and drinking it, you got to go to the, um, the kings and queens era where mm -hmm. they started grinding it down, adding the hot water, adding a ton of sugar and a ton of cream. And whether they're making coffee or the uh, copious amount of sugar and cream that's used to make chocolate, you know, tell me, Jay, can I hand you a handful of coffee beans and go, oh, here's a snack. Enjoy it in the car. Would that right. be something you'd even <laughs> take from my hand without going, you got to be kidding me. That's nasty. Right. You know? Nobody wants to chew a cocoa bean. Nobody wants to chew no. a, a, a um, coffee bean, you know, cocoa or coffee. They're the same, same, same. But, and the astringency level is two on a pH scale. If you go from zero to 14 on a pH scale, it's way down there at the two. And two is exponential from seven to six is 10 times. 
then it's a um, you know, a hundred, then it's a thousand, ten thousand. By the time you get down to two, we're talking about an astringent acid level of a hundred thousand times more acidic than base neutral. That's why we wow. have uh holes being eaten in the lining of the stomach, little diverticuli uh holes in the colon. Uh, rapid heart. I mean, there's so much adrenals. Oh, let's talk about destroying the adrenals with a cup of coffee or a piece of chocolate, right? But once you take those things into your mouth, every food has what is known as a post-digestive alkaline ash. What happens to the food after you consume it? And that goes to uh, coffee and cocoa goes to a negative 25. That means I've got to add 25 zeros to 100,000. I have no clue what that number is. I just, I have no <laughs> capability of knowing that. But uh, lemons also start out at two on the acid scale. I can cut a lemon in half and sterilize my kitchen cutting board, okay? Now, I don't right. have meat on my kitchen cutting board, but in the past, I did. And I could sterilize that that bacteria right off that 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 scale or that, that board. But... When you consume a lemon, now remember it's down here just as astringent as the coffee and the cocoa beans. I guess you can clean the kitchen with cocoa beans and coffee beans if you can right. clean a lemon with it, right? <laughs> but when you consume a lemon, it jumps to the alkalinity side to 9.9. .9. That is amazing body oh. healing alkalinity right there. If you go to uh, Gatorade and sodas that are like 2.7 and 3.0, those toxic waste drinks. Ooh, I said I said a brand name, erase, erase. You know, um, <laughs> there's certain sports drinks out there that are not healthy, like right. they think they are. Anyways, but that 2.7 to 3.0 is right there at like 10,000 times more acidic than base neutral. And when you consume those, the post-digestion alkaline ash is a negative 18, meaning I've got to add 18 more wow. zeros to 10,000. So what else it starts out there? A cucumber. A cucumber starts out at three. You think, oh, that can't be good for you until you eat it. A three mm -hmm. cucumber goes to 31.5 opposite extreme. That means wow. I have to add 31 and a half zeros to that number. And it is so alkalized. I tell people, if you're going to pollute your body with alcohol and coffee and sodas and things like that, please put a cucumber in your other hand and eat it first. <laughs> you know, to try to try to help balance that out just a little right. bit. But it's it's education. And once they see that, but the ethical demise I would have to take in order to do that double blind study is I'd have to have a control group that's getting the, the proper nutrition. And I'd have to have one that was getting the toxic waste. And I can't mm -hmm. do that. Ethically, I can't do that. I cannot right. know that I've got a group of people that I'm purposely giving bad things to. Uh, to get a study report. So people just have to take my word for it, give it a try and feel better. And then then we don't have to do the stupid study. You know what I mean? Right. Get rid of the coffee, get rid of the chocolate, you know, just just grow up. <laughs> Put on those big boy and girl girl <laughs> panties and and eat your vegetables. That's what I say. So let's go over here to that That's screen. It. I want to let's get over to your website and give us a yeah. tour, please. Okay, here's the the classroom. Yeah, there's my Facebook. Yeah, so that was that's my um, classroom there. So, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to get uh, approached by a local restaurant. They're like, oh, we have some space and you're welcome to use it. And they've been wonderful. It's a vegan restaurant and uh, they're super nice. supportive. So, yeah, they give me all that. Um, yeah, so I do classes once a week and I try. Oh, this this was at the hospital. I did bring uh, a couple of vegan bakers in trying to, you know, get and actually i was surprised at the response they got a great response with the doctors nurses and such at the hospital nice. um yeah yeah maybe i can pop on here and it'll give me a little tour here so we got the, the so, yeah vegan let's see if we'll jump through some photos there yeah there we a couple go. of vegan bakers oh so Ooh, this we was, got this some was, uh, veggie sushi going on exactly this is a, a very fun class so i do this this was a, a class i did but i also do this as a team building event so i try and do okay. you know local businesses they bring in their employees and we, you know, learn how to roll sushi and make sushi rice. And so, yeah, we did a, a, a cucumber maki and we did nice. a, 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 a little avocado and carrot. And, you know, uh, that was a lot of fun. We had a blast with that. Every class always ends around the table, though. I think That's just like, nice. you know, just like your know, core family value, you always sit down, 
every night for dinner, no matter what everybody's doing. Um, I think my classes should end the same way. And we do. We sit down. We eat what we've made. We chat. We exchange stories and uh, information. I learn just as much from my students as I hope, as they learn from me. Yeah. Um, you know, with you, you never, you know, I never stop learning. There's always great stuff going on. That's awesome. When we lived in Japan, we learned that there was a distinct difference between the word sushi and sashimi. The sushi yes. was the rice and vegetables wrapped, whereas the sashimi Correct. is where the raw comes in. And Absolutely. there's actually down when we go down to the beach in Florida, there's a restaurant there that is a Japanese restaurant. And um, uh, I think it's Japanese. Anyways, uh, but they do a veggie uh, sashimi and it's vegan. Mm. And I'm like, yes, oh, I yes. know. And what they did is they took a fillet knife and they thinly filleted tomatoes and laid it across. And I swear to you, it looked like salmon laying across <laughs> there, raw salmon. But it was, I literally had to call the chef back and say, uh, did y'all bring me the wrong one? He says, right. it's tomato. <laughs> it's okay, eat it, it's tomato. But it looked absolutely freaking beautiful. Who would have known? Oh, yes. That? Yeah, we've done that with uh, fire roasted red peppers as well. Oh, you yes. get that same texture, you know, you marinate it in a little bit of rice vinegar, yes. um, a little bit of nori, you know, mixed into it and yep. you know, a little sesame on top. That's all you need. That's awesome. Let's see what we got here. Oh, I love this. Oh, <laughs> happy mama's day. That's of so course. sweet. Well, and we use cows a lot as an example. They're big, they're strong, they're, they're beefy, you know, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> you show me another animal that they ate to get that protein, you know? It, right, exactly. They exactly. ate the grass. So skip the, the middleman because in a piece of meat, let me use my hands because I'm a, a hand person here. Right. <laughs> you have a, um, a piece of meat. I like to hold these fingers up. Only 20% of it is usable protein and it's from the grass the animal ate or the leaves, or the berries, or whatever. I'm thinking of deer, you know, mm -hmm. that okay. yep. berries okay. fast, yeah. you know. The rest of this is what my entire career is chasing out of your blood, you know, trying to get rid of this undigested thing. Like Dr. McDougall will say, there is not a single case in history that somebody died of protein deficiency. Protein is not our <laughs> fuel. It's either fat or carbohydrate, and it prefers carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. And if we're getting the right amount of carbohydrates, we have the proper proper brain function. We have the proper and proper heart rhythm. You know, all of that stuff comes together and is the perfect food for us. And when we add something that's not ours, it's like autoimmune diseases, for example. They'll they'll tell you that your white blood cells are attacking you because it's an autoimmune response. And in reality, it's these fragments of protein from foreign animals that have gotten into your tissue and organs and the white blood cells are going, my human's got a dead animal in it. I got to get that dead animal out of my human. <laughs> and so it appears that the body's attacking itself when it's really trying to protect you from the damage that you caused, you know, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Let's go back to the share thing again here. All right. So that's a cute mother's day. And then uh, tell me about this dish. What is this here? Uh, okay, so that was my latest class. Uh, that was our, so I did a whole class on Tofu 101. Um, okay. Tofu, tofu has been uh, like the, the, the thorn in my side. I am a, a textural person. I was a picky eater as a kid, believe it or not. Um, and I hadn't quite gotten over tofu. So I'm like, you know what? There's no better way to learn than to teach. So yeah. I'm like, let's do a class in tofu. And uh, it was great. I was a sold out class. And so that is a tofu Parmesan. Uh, okay. So it is. So it's tofu. And then we did uh, the mung bean eggs and then to coated it in a little bit of uh, panko. And then nice. uh, that one we can roast in a nice hot 400 degree oven. And then I made a very simple tomato basil, you know, tomato sauce to go on top. Nice. Uh, and then a little, a little bit of um, a vegan Parmesan from a local company. They'd use uh, cashews and nutritional yeast uh, so to make their that could probably be made in the air fryer as well. You could absolutely do that in the air fryer. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. It's and probably a firm the, tofu. The, the firm one. 
It is. It's a good, yep. I either firm or extra firm. Yep. And you can never go um, wrong with enough broccoli for fiber and nutrients and, and stuff. That's amazing. I, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I love to have that with almost any meal. Yeah. So now I, I do see bread back here and I am an advocate for gluten-free eating as well, because there's not a single person on the planet that I've, you know, that exists, but in all the thousands and thousands of people that I've looked at in their blood in the microscope, they, those that are eating gluten have a gluten response in their blood. And so um, they think they don't have any allergy to it or adherence to it because they don't feel like they feel bad. Like me, if I get a crumb, I'm doubled over in pain or my mother, she had chronic diarrhea from it. And so uh, I have them go on a little pinky promise trial for four days. And in four days, they call me and they go, oh my gosh, I'm standing up straight, I think for the first time in my life. And my poop, oh my gosh, Dr. Rowe, my poop was like so <laughs> much. And it's like, yes, your, your colon your colon is as long, your large intestine is as long as you are tall. And I want to see that yeah. much poop if you stretched it out in the toilet every day, two to three times a day, about an hour after each meal. I am yourpooplady.com. Yes, you can learn more about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the bloodlady.com. I'm the starchlady.com, the urinelady.com, yourpooplady.com. Yeah, I'm all of that. So, That's great. Yeah, so, so if you switch that. Yes. And like I said, a, a lot of my uh, classes, it's transitional. So I yes. try not to scare them too much. <laughs> so I do use some standard formatting. Uh, yes, yep. exactly. I love exactly. it. That's cute. So. I love him. So that's <laughs> you got your classes there. You got one coming up on the 20th of May. I do. I do. So th this was a great event I did for, um, oh, yeah. So yeah, the 20th, we have the vegan wine and cheese tasting. That'll be fun. Uh, just it's just a cocktail reception type event to get people to try new things. Really, so are, there's, you, there's... are you teaching them how to make vegan cheeses? Not yet. I'm still working on that myself, and I would. Okay. I'm trying to learn more. Right now, we have a lot. I'm so lucky here in in New England that we have access to amazing companies that are doing this. Um, so yeah. it's it's a good um, jumping off point. For people, when uh, we get, get over to uh, the recipes I want to show you, I found a recipe online and I've been making cheese. Wait for it out of lentils. Yes, sir. Wow. Lentil cheese. Lentil cheese. I would have never thought of that. <laughs> yes, it's absolutely fantastic. You can slice it, you can grill it. It's amazing. And so oh, fantastic. you literally blend it, put it in the container, leave it overnight. Next day, you can start slicing it. It's a fantastic. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, oh, my page went away here. There we go. <laughs> right, so, back down here. so um, that might have been the end of the pictures there. Uh, have you had this that was, very long? So that that was uh since about January, but um yeah that okay. was uh, uh the last picture there was a special event I catered for Parkinson's research. Oh, this uh, one. And they wanted. What's up? This recipe, that... this menu here. Oh, uh, no, no. The last picture that you had up, it was um, some fruit oh. and a few other things. Yeah. So that was it was a nice um, uh, catering I did for Parkinson's research fundraiser. And nice. they wanted to provide vegan food uh, at the fundraiser. Uh, so I did some nice um, fruit skewers and a, a summer corn chowder um, and nice. Uh, some nice caprese uh, crostinis for them. So. Uh, this looks yeah. fantastic. This looks like lentils hiding in there. there. Oh yeah, that's a great thing. Is you can <laughs> you can hide those things everywhere. You can. I can't believe how amazing they are when I sprout them and they literally turn into like a salad. I mean, you oh, can't yeah. even tell that it's a bean. It's just all green sprouts, you know. Exactly. It's 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 a lot of fun. Let's see if I got some more recipes popping up here. Yeah, I'm trying to think the last few things I've done. We'll have to uh, show you your blood and show you what that wine is doing to it. But we'll save that for another day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Got to meet you where you're at, boy. <laughs> that, that's that's it. That's it. You know, that's and that's what I try and do with with, uh, you know, all the people that come through. Um, I give them my journey uh, and then hopefully, you know, give them a little boost to, to continue on and, and keep doing it. So. Right. Yeah. This is fantastic. So you guys, if you, 
want to check out some more of his page, go to Facebook, Chef J, let's say Chef J's Cooking School. And That's I'll it. link that in the, the description when we do the thing. Let me just copy that right now. So when I go to upload this video, I'll have that handy. And you can learn more about it. You know, make a road trip, take a plane, get in his classes. There, th There's not a lot of people teaching this and it needs to be more. So that's why I'm really excited about the prospect of you getting this on some sort of an internet level that we can just market the heck out of, you know, exactly. to, be able to share with people. Um, exactly. Cur I'm very... curious, what's this? That looks like, uh, let's see, I believe that was like a, a tofu, like a piccata almost. So that we did a little amazing. bit of, um, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I love using oat milk and, um, yeah, we have a, a bunch of great mushroom grows up here that bring me product to use and to play with. And, you know, nice. we'll do like a, a mushroom scallop and, and things like that just to oh, really, yeah. Rhode Island is a big seafood state, you know? So I try yeah. and, uh, you know, try and recreate as much local cuisine as I can. For sure. Um, let me, let me see over here. I want to show you real quick. Uh, you mentioned the, the scallops with the mushrooms and I've got a picture right here if I, Go and search on my site, and I look for uh, scallops. Let me see if it pops up here. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. There we go. Watch that. So uh -huh. I use the the trumpet mushrooms. Guess what that quote unquote butter sauce is? Guess what that is? <laughs> what would that one be? Is that that is that the corn? No. No. It is no joke. I can't make this up. It is a jar of water-packed artichoke hearts blended and used. You don't have to do anything uh -huh. to it. It is like the perfect flavor for saucing, using it for gravy, but it's literally just artichoke hearts that have been blended to smooth and uh, which means you can buy the cheap ones because you're going to blend the snot out of them anyways. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> but that scored trumpet oh. mushrooms and the artichoke sauce and that meal tasted every bit as good as every bite I ever thought I ever ate in a fancy restaurant throughout my life. It Precisely. was amazing. Yeah, exactly. amazing. So we, we do quite a bit of stuff like that. See, this is like one of those 50-50 plates, you know, oh, yeah. where it's half starch, half vegetable. Uh, going back here to the um, the home on that second, take me back to no, take me back to that home. Hold on, let me get back to this home. Back at the top of the page here, um, but we can go through any any kind. There's that loaf of bread that is literally oh, lentils. Oh, that looks amazing! It's wow. lentils. Half of the the Vitamix jar was uh, soaked lentils. The other half was the sprouts, and I think I have a picture of the actual sprouts in the jar. <laughs> Gotta love those Vitamix, though. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, you know, I, I actually love the, the Blendtec better because it's three horsepowers where the Vitamix is two and a half. But I oh, gave wow. up half of a horsepower to get that damper that I can shove down in. Yes. There. <laughs> and that is worth every bit of that lost, you know, half horsepower. Right. So that's been amazing. This is the guy I was telling you about where he goes through and he explains how... In, uh, incredible it is to eat vegan and he starts using the, the plants and stuff to uh, illustrate oh, yeah. it. It's hilarious. It's like three minutes long and it's just it's absolutely hilarious. You can <laughs> find that in the group section of Facebook under the startslady.com he says let us explain it you know so he held up a head <laughs> of lettuce you know it's, it's pretty cute. Uh, this is the one I made for dinner just last night and it's uh, you know some rice and I call it ort soup I went in and we had gone to a Thai restaurant. I had some leftover rice noodle pad thai without the egg, broccoli, mm -hmm. and the spring rolls. You know how they get hard uh, if they sit overnight. Yeah. So I took all the guts out of that, dumped it in a bowl and or in a pan, added some vegetable broth to it. I added some uh, uh, Nepalis, which are cactus. I mean, I literally cleaned out the fridge. We wow. call it forks for old, rotten, tasty stuff. Or uh, you might so call it the kitchen sink, you know, but I made this yeah, giant exactly. soup and then just poured it over top of the rice, put in some more red roasted bell peppers on top of that. And it was absolutely delightful. There's some uh, hatched chilies right there. I mean, I literally cleaned out the fridge of everything. So 
Oh, um, just stuff like that that you can do. But again, it's about a 50-50 ratio there. There's those eggs. Mm -hmm. So this is mine right here. This is how it turns out. And I got the potatoes and the cactus and the onions and stuff going on. This is the recipe oh, that I found nice. online by Vegan Hacks Pod. And it's literally mung beans, nutritional yeast, black salt, turmeric. I, I do less turmeric, though. If you do a half teaspoon, it tastes turmeric -y. And you just oh, want yeah. a little bit, just a little bit for yeah. color or leave them a little paler. Onion exactly. powder, the chick bean aquafaba, and a quarter mm -hmm. cup of water. And it scrambles up just like eggs. It's just amazing. And it's not as expensive uh, as buying it at the store. It, so, right, right, exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's just so many things. And, and our, our clients, they'll send in pictures of their food uh, because we run contests all the time. What she got right there? What is that? Oh, she made some like enchiladas or something. It looks like, I was say, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and some nice. looks like split pea soup, some rice, zucchini and potatoes. You see, I mean, nobody's going hungry in our houses. Not a single no, soul. No, no, exactly. You know, I, I love doing soups and curries are a fantastic way to clean out the refrigerator. They you are. Know, you, can put, you can put anything in a curry and it's going to taste good. <laughs> yeah. This is my new favorite sandwich obsession. I put the uh, horseradish mustard on the uh, the lentil bread. I put pickles and sprouts in it. And oh my gosh, I think I'm eating some sort of a, you know, old time uh, previous life deli sandwich and I don't even miss the meat. It's not there. Right. It's, it's, yeah. I'm not missing it. It's that mustard no, flavor I was looking for. Right, exactly. And that's the thing. Like I used to, you know, growing up in Rhode Island, there's a fairly heavy Italian uh, you know, culture here, you know, up in uh, downtown Providence. And um, I used to love a good Italian sandwich. And, and I realized I just liked the vegetables and the dressing. <laughs> was yeah. what it was. That's you what know, it is. What I mean, it. give me a mustard. And in fact, this is really a funny story. My, my son, who's the chef. Okay. He's turning 43 in September. Um, we were building a fence in Las Vegas, Nevada, around one of our first houses when he was a little boy and it was lunchtime. And I said, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. We're going to have to go in and make some sandwiches. A few minutes later, four-year-old Justin comes toddling out of the house and he's got the biggest tray he can find. I think it was even a lid to something. And he's <laughs> got an entire loaf of mustard sandwiches and it's the French's mustard and the mustard oh. is oozing out the side <laughs> like frosting. And there's this uh, whole entire plate. He's even cut them in half. Entire loaf of oh, mustard oozy sandwiches. And I'm the good mom. I ate them. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but he knows that I uh, love sandwiches and I love mustard. So I, I've grown up a little bit. I've moved off the Frenches. I am obsessed right. with the horseradish ground, you know, brown oh, yeah. mustard, you know. But it's all about the flavor and it's like he well, says, I it. have a Mary Poppins uh, container of curry in the fridge. I, we've had that that container of curry. I can't tell you for how long we've had that curry, but it never ends. And so he says, oh, I'm using the Mary Poppins curry for lunch today. And he's adding some of it to the skillet, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you don't need much, you know, and it, yeah. and it does. It just gives you a, and the house smells like that. I, I love doing that in the uh, in the fall, you know, cooking with sage and cooking with clove and allspice yes. and you know star anise and those flavors and just having them you know all throughout yes. the kitchen it's good it's so great i was in shock to find out that the secret ingredient to get that pho at the thai restaurant yes. the taste exact was that star anise that star anise yeah who, who knew it's like oh my yeah. gosh i love that stuff so i do that yeah. for entertaining i love if i know i'm having people over that are not vegan or plant-based um, I'll do dishes like that. I'll do Mexican or I'll do pho because yeah. I'll just make a giant pot of broth. It, it's not hard. And, you know, put out all the toppings and everyone can build it the way they want. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll roast off some chickpeas and have some lentils and, you know, nobody complains Could be in that, because all the flavors in the broth, you know, yeah. and you can customize it the way you want. Yeah. It's so much fun. Yeah. That was, that was another big class. I did a pho class. Um, yeah. And it, it went over very well. Yeah, it's, it smells so good. His only complaint is that my other obsession is not wasting. So when my mustard bottle gets low or my sriracha bottle gets low <laughs> or my curry gets low or, you know, my, um, uh, what's the other one we use? The uh, miso gets low. 
I add oh, yeah. water to it and shake it up. And I have all these oh, yeah. little like, bottles in the fridge that I will just drizzle on top of stuff. And, oh, and so, I'm, yeah. so I'm not wasting anything. And, and but he like one sriracha that then he grabbed the old sriracha bottle and gave it a squirt. And because it was liquid, <laughs> it was like it drowned his meal, you know, right. <laughs> so I heard about that a little bit. But Mexican right. food, I'm here in Texas, San Antonio, the heart of Texas. Oh, yeah. And Mexican, I mean, just in my little teeny town where I live, I think the population is 1900 or something. I'm outside of San Antonio. Uh, there's like, you know, eight to 10 uh, Mexican restaurants <laughs> in this little tiny town. Oh, yeah. Um, I have certain ones that I love more than others. Sorry, guys. You know, they, I, I do have to be <laughs> picky. But um, I like them because I can pretty much walk in. They go, oh, you're that doctor that likes your uh, veggie fajitas, no oil, dry corn tortillas, 100%. And I'm like going, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. But they can take the, you know, the bell peppers and the onions. And, and if I say it nicely, they'll throw in some zucchini and, you know, a couple of other things they've got in the back. What? And they will do it all on a dry, dry skillet, bring it out to me sizzling on that cast iron flame pan. You know, and bring me my homemade, you know, corn tortillas, and I'm in seventh heaven. Got a little, you know, rice on the side if I want it or something. I usually mm -hmm. don't get the beans because they usually put some dead animal floating in that. You know, they do. Rice. They love to put lard in there. Yeah. But, but we were at a a huva yesterday, which is a Mongolian grill, and I asked oh. the guy when I gave him my plate of vegetables and my rice noodles, and I also had some black beans and chickpeas in there in my my vegetable mix. When I gave him my two bowls to put up there and, and grill, I said, oh, and can you please, no oil. And he looked at me a little funny. I go, yeah, seriously, no oil. And somebody was with me. He's like, oh, yeah, she doesn't do oil. And he didn't. He, he got a, a bottle of water, a cup of water, and threw that on the grill to get things moving. Right. And nothing yep. sticks. People say, how do you cook without oil? I go, a little bit of water, a little bit of vegetable broth, and I don't have anything sticking. And mm -hmm. here's the best part ever, Jay. My family can taste the flavor of the food. Everybody's right. like, oh my gosh, I can really taste this because it's not drowning in artery clogging, capillary clogging oil. And right. so that makes a huge, huge difference. So absolutely. So I love, I, you probably got to yeah. pick up your daughter here. So I'm trying not to keep you too long, but <laughs> no I, do worries, want no you to, I do want you to highlight if you can for me, um, let's get back to this, this guy thing. I, what would you say to all the husbands and men and college students? I mean, we've got vegan male athletes, vegan female athletes. They're, they're not hurting for any of the nutrients that their body needs when they eat properly, like we're teaching. What would you say to them? What would get them into the mode of going, oh, this is, this is me. I need to do this. Right. So for me, the, the big motivator was really one, seeing how my father and his father and, you know, how they aged and how at a relatively young age, my father is only 65, uh, is not in very good shape. And, you know, my daughter, I, I my wife and I waited till we were a little bit older to, to have kids. Uh, restaurant industry is not family friendly. Uh, so, you know, my daughter's still young. And I want to be here, you know, as a, as a, a, a male, our, you know, uh, innate responsibility is as a caretaker, really. We just need to make sure that the family is provided for and that, you know, they'll be able to flourish. And that was my big motivator. And, and my health was really important because I need to be able to continue to work and continue to provide. And, you know, I want to be there to walk my daughter down the aisle and, and things like that. I don't want to miss these moments. Um, yeah. So that was my big thing. And you know what? If I can do that and it, it you know required me to not eat something, that's fine. That That's not that hard. There's, you know, much harder things in life. Um, but if you really look at it, it's our responsibility. You know, it's, it's our job to be healthy. It's our job to be available um, and to be around as long as we possibly can. And yeah. so, you know, don't don't be afraid. Optics. Look, it what everybody else thinks is is nobody's business. You know, it's my my immediate family. 
they some of them understand it some of them really just don't get it at all um and you know but the you know my brothers and sisters you know i'm the oldest of five uh you know the more i explained to them and the more i realized and, and i related back you know to my mother's health and you know my father's health now mm -hmm. and i'm like look you know really like you guys need to pay attention and do this for the family it's it's you know it's not selfish um you know it's it's doing what we're supposed to do um so that we can be around to appreciate all this stuff yeah. you know and that that was a big and thing that goes for both sides too as as parents in general as even right. families that don't have children for their themselves i mean the whole point of coming together and and whether they're single or they're married or or whatever is to have the healthiest most productive life possible and I'll have people come into my clinic and they'll say, you know, I start talking to them and they're, they're hardcore, you know, they're, they're shut off and, and they're like, going, I'd rather die than give up my pizza, you know, or right. something like that. <laughs> and I say, hold that pose. Are you hungry? And they go, yeah, weirdo. Why are you asking? And I go, cause yeah. double Dave's is right next door. I'll be right back. And I go next door to double Dave's and I get their, order their cauliflower crust pizza sauce veggies sauce plunked on top run it through the oven please there's no meat there's no dairy on there i they bring it over to me because i'm right next door to i mean literally right next door <laughs> they'll bring it in and deliver my pizza while i'm still talking to them and i open that pizza up it looks freaking beautiful it exactly. smells amazing and i have them take it take a bite and they inhale it right there in front of me and it's only 10 inches because the gluten-free ones are smaller and yeah. they are in shock. And then I go on to tell them how I get my dry, no oil fajitas at the Mexican restaurant. There is not a restaurant on the planet that I cannot find food to eat. Even if I have to go to the most greasy steakhouse in Texas, I can right. live off of that side menu by getting a baked sweet potato steamed mm -hmm. broccoli steamed asparagus a side salad i mean there is nobody going hungry right so, exactly any restaurant you can go to i saw this the other day and i think it was some bean some you know grain and some vegetable every restaurant is going to have some mm -hmm. bean some grain and some vegetable and That's right. and you know and they can easily prepare any of those things very very simply for you that's right. Even yeah. in an Asian restaurant, they give you the choice of steamed rice or the fried rice. Right. You know, exactly. obviously I'm going to go for the steamed rice because I don't want the fried, you know, I don't want that, that oil. Right. But we have become absolutely crock pot friendly, uh, air fryer friendly. My stove, I drove all right. the way to Austin because there was only one air fried oven combo. We're talking a big oven. Uh, last yes. top, left in the state and it just happened to be in Austin. I said, I'm on my way. You know, and I ran up there and I got this this oven slid into the back of my car and brought it home. And we love that thing. It comes with a tray that's like the biggest thing I've ever seen. And it like fills up the entire rack in the oven and oh, yeah. you can buy extra. So I can actually do two at a time. And uh, wild buffalo wings made out of cauliflower, you know, um, it, yeah. you know, you name it, roasted vegetables. Um, if I'm in a really busy day i will actually make my lentil tortillas and i'll spread them out on um parchment paper and slap them in there on the oven and flip them so that i don't have to stand over the stove and do them i can just do a okay. whole entire do tray a, yeah. in the in the yeah. oven and stuff Much more efficient. <laughs> and, and then people talk about desserts and you can actually take you know a little bit of uh, raw cocoa and a little bit of uh maybe some honey or something like that or agave, I guess would be better. And um, uh, uh, cherries, like cherry pie filling. And you can make these like brownie things. You know, you just plunk them out oh, and yeah. pop them in the oven. And it's like this cherry chocolatey thing, you know. And again, you're back to the cocoa thing. So when you do eat that, you got to go, okay, acid. I just brought in a ton of acid. I'm going to have to counter that, you know. But mm -hmm. people think that they can't have anything that's delightful ever again. And so we do a lot of dump cakes where we'll... We'll take the gluten-free cake mix. We'll put the fruit in the bottom, sprinkle it on top, you know, put a little bit of the juice on the top where we used to put butter. We just drizzle a little bit of the, right. the, the, the syrup and bake it. And it does this while it's in the oven. 
and comes <laughs> out as this beautiful, beautiful, you know, what do you call that? Kind of a, uh, not a custard. What am I thinking? Um, no, it's almost like a, bread, yeah. Almost like a bread pudding. Like almost, a bread pudding, right? yeah. Yeah. And it's it's fantastic. So there's all kinds of ways to to satisfy that craving. We actually make our own cranberry juice out of the, we, at Christmas time when they have the cranberries out there in the, the produce yeah. section, I'm like buying them, scooping them into my right. cart. Oh, yeah. Throwing them in my freezer. In, and exactly. I will make cranberry juice all year long with those cranberries, you know? Oh, that's great. Just blend them and strain them or not. You know, the blend tech you or the Vitamix, you don't need to strain it. It's going to beat the snot out of it. So True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, no, I, I love doing that. A little homemade cranberry sauce. I put a little bit of allspice in mine, you know, a little bit of um, cinnamon. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of yeah. clove. Yeah. So. Oh, we could talk recipes and food all day. I think, oh, so. I know, right? I love I love it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, definitely keep in touch and uh, maybe join my, my Facebook group page so that you can kind definitely. of see what's going on. And if you need any help from me, I'm here to help always. I, I love helping. And um, uh, let us know if you ever offer any virtual classes that my peeps down here in Texas or my peeps in, you know, Australia or wherever they're at can join in because they can actually join in. That would be right. Awesome. Absolutely. I would love it. Yeah. Find me up on, on Facebook and Instagram. My web sh uh, website is uh, chefjays.co. That's got all my classes are on there. A little bit about me, a little bit about what uh, the services I offer. Um, and I'm, and I'm easy to contact, you know, feel free to, uh, you know, to send me messages. My, my family does it all the time. They're like, Oh, not, I, I have calm, this, right? what, how do I cook it? Or what am I going to make with it? You know? <laughs> um, and I, I love I it. Think... Yeah. But interact if you have, uh, anything, um, I think I did that wrong. Oh, oh not, not, uh, no, yeah. It's just dot co just dot co. Chef J's dot co. Yep dot co yep get rid of the m ta-da yeah, there, there it go. is there's his logo you're on the right page and find that yep, that's it that's now we're talking feed. there we go look at that oh did you make gnocchi yeah. what is this one uh those are um it's a tortellini actually uh made with a vegan ricotta okay, uh, from, okay. yeah from a local company I just saw a recipe today for a vegan feta and it's made out of soaked uh, almonds and the spices and you blend it and leave it overnight and it turns into a brick you can flake off like um, feta. Oh yeah, just like, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yep, oh yeah, there's some great favorites. stuff on here. What do you have down here yeah. in the trays? Oh, uh, let's see, what Falsies? were we doing there? I think that's, believe it or not, I think that's salad dressing. We were doing a huge, uh, uh, I think that was our holiday meal at the hospital, actually. Okay. Um, so we it looked like a hatch 400, chili blend. But we have, yeah, yeah. But we have all kinds of, um, you know, we offer uh, vegan options every day at the hospital. That was, nice. so, you know, being Rhode Island, um, stuffed call hogs, a call hog is a big giant clam, uh, is like a staple up here. And mm. we were going, uh, uh, my aunt and uncle invited us over for dinner. They're like, oh, we're having fish. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make uh, stuffies is what we call them, but I'll, I'll make them vegan. Uh, so I did them that way with, uh, yeah, exactly. With some nice um, you know, oyster mushrooms I got locally and uh, yeah. with a, a whole grain bread and peppers and uh, peppers, uh, celery and onions and some vegetable broth. And I use a little smoked paprika to kind of give it because they usually use uh, chorizo when they make them yes. up here. Yeah. And uh, so a little smoked paprika, you know, really, it really just brings that, that memory back. Cause I, you know, food yeah. has memories and, um, you know, and I really want my food to taste like it used to. Uh, yeah. so that's what I play with. And I find those essential flavors that are like, okay, this is what, you know, this is the feeling I got. And, um, you know, this is what I love. So. Yeah. So a lot about the, the vegan cooking in general is trying to, trying to recreate some of those uh, taste bud memories that we had from the past. And, and it's, it's hard to get people to realize that you don't have to go from the memory, just go with the, the food. So if you're using a base of, you know, potatoes, rice, beans, lentils, quinoa, oats, things like that, 
you can do mm -hmm. so much with those. I'm looking at this substitute page you got right here, yeah. which shows you how you can substitute uh, ground flax, chia, protein powder, agar agar, mashed bananas. Instead of yep. eggs, you can use all of these things. And that's what I was talking oh, yeah. about with the applesauce. With the bread. Like sweetened applesauce is you know, another yeah. one. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, those yep. are those are excellent. This one here. I do. Is... I try and find these great infographics and and you know, these mm -hmm. put it in a very simple, you know, easy to understand method. Yeah. I mean, people think, you know, what are you ever gonna stick in a tortilla ever again? It's like uh beans, <laughs> just like oh, yeah. beans, sweet potato. I'm obsessed with basil and that roasted oh, um, most definitely. Um, ta ta uh, uh, paprika that you were talking about. Oh, yeah, I, smoked paprika. I, you know, yeah. I, I never really used paprika a lot, but then when our son moved back home with us here this last year, uh, while he was trying something different, oh my gosh, we have gone through so many jars of smoked paprika. <laughs> and um, I went to Costco, in fact, with a friend who has a membership the couple weeks ago, and I got like four of the big jars of smoked paprika. <laughs> it's like, okay, we're just gonna put it in our cheeks and suck on it like chewing tobacco. You know? Right. <laughs> Much healthier version. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, well, thank you so much for your time. I, I just really want to tell you how much I appreciate that. Our viewers are going to appreciate that. Hopefully you can embed this on your website or somewhere and and share it with as many people as you can because it's going to take people like you to help get that word out there and educate people on the fact that they are not going to die if they don't have a dead animal dying on their plate. And, I mean, just think of the amount of bacteria they're taking in because as soon as an oh. animal dies, it starts to decompose. And that bacteria that's in their, their intestines anyways, I say it goes into like piranha mode. You can go to YouTube and watch a three minute video of the decomposing squirrel and no animals interfere <laughs> with it at all. It literally goes from rigor mortis to the, the fur blowing away in the wind in just a right. matter of time lapse photos. And when you realize that that animal, as soon as it dies, the last message the brain said sent was decompose. So no matter how much you cook it, you are still taking that bacteria into your body and thinking it's not going to do mm -hmm. any harm, you know? And I tell people, um, it, you know, they'll say, well, I eat chicken. I don't eat beef. And I go, well, okay, um, I have guinea hens. Can you run out to my yard and grab a guinea hen and take a bite out of it before you get it back in the house to cook it? And they're like, going, no, you're weird. Why would you say that? And I go, then that might not be your food. But the fox family that lives in the tree in my back acreage there, they can take out a guinea hen anytime they want one. And I let them. And uh, the bobcat that took one out the other day, okay, that's, that was definitely his food. But mm -hmm. if I can't eat, if I can take a bite out of those feathers and, and flesh, that's not my food. I got to wash it pluck it, wash it again, cut it. I mean, what happens if you eat raw chicken, undercooked chicken? What happens to us as humans if we eat undercooked chicken? We get sick oh. and we die. You know what right. I mean? That's a yeah. huge red flag. That's not our food. You know what I right. mean? And people miss that memo somehow. But I can go out to my garden <laughs> on this side of the acreage and I can grab a sweet potato out of the dirt, brush it off really good, and I can chew on that raw before I get yeah. it back in the house. Or I can grab some cauliflower or some kale or some lettuce or some tomatoes. I can grab anything out of my gardens and off my trees if it's ready to eat. And I can eat it on the way back into the house and it won't kill me like eating some of these other items would. So if you got to go through exactly. eight to 10 steps to get that thing onto your plate before it will kill you, it's not your food. Probably not supposed you know? to be there. Yep. <laughs> yeah, not supposed to be there. And I do have a little bit of a... Um, well, I, okay, I have a lot of bit of adherence to those fake meats that they have out there, you know, because sure. if you look at the ingredients, there's so much fat in there. And we're not talking regular fat. We're talking saturated fats, the bad kind. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the worse than the bad kind. And so you can, and you can see it on my Facebook page, uh, meatloaf. I'm going to go back to my old thing, lentils, you know, yeah, lentils. Meatloaf. Yeah. Dr. Um, yep. um, Esselstein's wife and daughter do a cooking show on YouTube and they call it eat loaf. Eat oh, that's loaf. cute. <laughs> they, leave the, they leave the M off and you can do meatballs and hamburger patties and loaves and, 
you can do so many things if that's what you're trying to recreate and that's what you're trying to make but nothing tastes better than a couple slices of my lentil bread slapped on top of a slice of lentil loaf pulled right. <laughs> out of the fridge the next day you know with all those spices and onions and all that stuff in there that's and it, it. It's, all the like, it's like it's all the preparation it's it's perfecto so and i'm not going to get sick and i'm not going to be tired my body's not going to ache from all of that nasty eating i have clients that have had chronic pain head to toe for decades and they start eating this way and they suddenly like me i have arthritis 16 points and swollen knuckles to prove it in in my hands 16 points there i've got it in my neck and my lower back from an accident i was in back 20, what, 28 years ago and zero pain I can do anything I want with my hands. I can do anything with my body that I want because I don't have the inflammatory response of eating the way that I used to eat back then. Mm -hmm. And that's what that is. It's an inflammatory yep. response from eating toxic waste, you know? So it's education, back. education, education, education. Um, that's it. In the back of my car says health and it's an acronym H E in period, you know, and it's, Health education adds life throughout history is basically what that means. You know, the acronym for health. Right. And um, my YouTube channel is Health Natural Solutions because I'm trying to just help educate a little bit more. So you can join that help educate part. Well, definitely. <laughs> so, well, thank you, Dr. Questions? Ryan. I appreciate uh, it. There's, there's anything you wanted to share still? Anything you got left there in the brain cells? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think we covered. Uh, I think we covered everything. Yeah, that, that was, and I learned a lot. So I'm always happy to learn some more. And I appreciate what you do. You, you take it to that next level. You know, with I, I'm a very logical person. So when I, you know, saw Dr. Barnard speak and was able to understand, okay, it's pretty cut and dry. There's, there's yeah. no, you know, there really is no gray area. You don't need it. It's fine. And you know, the facts are there. Uh, so yeah. yeah, just follow the facts and yeah, keep doing what you're doing and, and getting that info out there. So it's wonderful. Yeah. Well, it's like when people ask me, well, why do you have guinea hens? I go, that is the cheapest pest control I've ever had. I'm looking oh, at them yeah. out my window right now. They're side yep. by side going out there, eating all the bugs in my yard, 4,000 bugs per bird per day. Yes, That's sir. It. Yep. And, and I'll, I'll feed them for the rest of their too. lives and let them live happy. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Until the bobcat or the foxes get them. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, thank you again. I really appreciate it. And I'm my looking pleasure. forward to learning and hearing from you more. Okay. Absolutely. So my thank you so much. All right. Take care now. Appreciate it. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>